Tigers and Gamecocks tonight inside Colonial Life Arena. Welcome to Columbia, South Carolina, where LSU tries to do what no team has done in 20 games against South Carolina. That is defeat the Gamecocks, the number one team in the country, sitting at 25 and one, looking to stretch its win streak to 20 games in a row tonight. Delighted to have you with us inside Colonial Life Arena with Khadijah Sessions, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. These LSU Tigers, they've won four of five. South Carolina, on the other hand, trying to stretch that win streak to 20 straight games. Um, tonight's going to be very interesting. You want to see um, see if LSU can slow down the front court of uh, South Carolina. You want to see if uh, Kayla Pointer can run her team and, and get a big upset here tonight in, in Columbia, South Carolina. Kayla Pointer goes for more than 15 points per game for LSU, a great scoring guard, one of the best in the league. One of the best in the league. She's been playing almost 40 minutes a game ever since Ayanna Mitchell uh, went down. The last three contests, she's been averaging 18 points uh, per contest, so I'm interested to see how she matches up with Tyasia Harris tonight. On the other side, Aaliyah Boston, the freshman sensation from the Virgin Islands, continues an outstanding first year. Um, she's having an incredible year, a year that most people probably didn't think she was going to have. She's three blocks away um, from tying the freshman all blocks for freshmen, so um, tonight's going to be very interesting to see um, how she matches up outside of the paint with Iowa tonight. Your old teammate Elena Coates' record in jeopardy tonight. <laughs> Boston and the Gamecocks sitting at 25 and 1. And overall, LSU has won 22 times in 35 meetings against South Carolina. Of course, the Gamecocks have had the recent advantage in recent years. One of the most difficult places to play in all the country, Col Colonial Life Arena. And we're just about ready to go tonight. I think we just had uh, an issue with a, a player in her undershirt under her jersey. So right now we're waiting on tip off. Um, she had to go change her shirt um, underneath. So we may even um, change starters in the starting lineup um, due to that issue. Dawn Staley getting the info as well. You're right, there were four LSU players out of the court. The one who had to run back to the locker room momentarily was the center who's going to jump it up here, Faustine Afua. She's ready. So is Aaliyah Boston. Ready to play some basketball tonight. Let's go. South Carolina in the white, LSU in the pink. I love when it's a pink game. I love to see the pink jerseys. It looks really nice. Jerseys, socks, headbands, it's everywhere. After the first miss from Zaya Cook, it's going to stay with South Carolina. Um, Zaya Cook's actually been shooting the ball extremely well from outside. I believe her last three to five contests, she's been shooting 50%. Um, behind the three, so that's a, a pretty rare miss right there uh, for Zaya. They look for her again at the same spot. And you're going to see LSU um, pretty much probably stay in his zone and try to avoid Aaliyah Boston um, getting the ball and double teaming her, uh, making things a lot difficult for her to touch the ball, as you see right there. And it works on possession number one. Kayla Pointer, number three in the pink. Watch out, Khadija, you were just spotlighting her game. She averages more than 15 points per game, more than four assists a night. There's Trazi, first basket goes down. Um, great possession. Um, she worked that shot, short shot um, in pre um, in shoot around today. I came to LSU shoot around. They were working on a lot of jump shots. So to see one jump shot, the first jump shot that you take on your possession, offensive possession, um, goes in is a great sign for LSU here. This is the perfect start for the Tigers, a turnover, a basket. There are some teams that have come into this building and found it really difficult to score the first quarter against South Carolina. Um, South Carolina has been leading every first quarter uh, of the game um, all season long. Um, they've been scoring about 11.8 points per uh, contest averaging over uh, their opponents in, in, the, in the first quarter. Your opponent just punts on the first quarter and hit the five out there at the start of the second. Kiki Herbert Harrigan a little strong.
And you see LSU here. She, they, they're just going to just try to slow the tempo down, try to work their offense to try to get South Carolina to stay in their defense possessions a little bit longer here. Um, great steal there, heads up play, and great pass by your point guard, um, Taasia Harris. Um, she's been playing phenomenal um, for the Gamecocks uh, as of lately. Uh, her turnover to assist ratio is, is outstanding. Um, she's been playing really well, so I'm excited to see uh, what she's going to do here uh, tonight. That was a sweet bounce pass to Bree Beal. South Carolina has won 19 straight, thanks in large part to some stout defense. The five-second count forces a turnover. Just great heads-up play. Um, I think LSU just got to get a little bit more movement in their offense uh, with South Carolina's hard defense. They have to get a lot more movement. Congratulations to Dawn Staley, who's in her 12th season. You see, was just named to the Naismith Coach of the Year watch list. She might, just might, become the first player of the year and coach of the year to ever win that award. Um, that's and impressive. Boston again. Um, that's impressive. Coach Staley's came um, to Columbia, South Carolina, and really um, changed the culture um, for women's basketball here um, at Carolina. So that's a pretty big accomplishment. LSU scored first. It's a 6 0 Carolina run. There's Pointer again. It's a great take, great hesitation, reading the defense, and, and just attack, staying aggressive, attacking um, South Carolina's defense. And as you, I mean, you probably can't see, but in, in the back screen you have Ayana uh, standing up, clapping for her teammates and cheering. She was a really big part of LSU um, success this season. It was sad to see her go down against Texas A&M on February 2nd. Um, this is, I think, their fourth game um, playing without her. Um, she's over there um, being a leader um, that she is, that she was on the floor. Applauding the steal and, the, and then the basket for Jalen Cherry. But how big of a loss is that for LSU without having Ayanna Mitchell? Um, in this part of the season, I'm sure that it, it hurts, it sucks, it stings. Um, losing your leader, your grit player, your tough, your, your, one of your toughest players. Um, you can look at the stat sheet and see when she brings offensively. But as I spoke with Coach Nikki earlier, she said there's some things that you can't replace. And that's grit, toughness, and leadership um, by uh, Ayanna. So there, she's missed dearly by her teammates. You need players like Awa Trazi, who had hit one earlier, missed that one on the baseline to step up. Tough shot of the baseline for Beal. That's been the difficulty for LSU, trying to find offense outside of, from Pointer and Afua. Correct. So that's where you have to have your leaders just step up a little bit more, knowing that one of your offensive players went down with a big-time injury. Great, great defense there by Jalen Cherry. She's been playing extremely well these first five minutes of this ball game. It'll be LSU ball down two on the road inside Colonial Life Arena. So tomorrow we've got a gymnastics triple header. It's Friday Night Heights on the SEC Network. Alabama and Florida at 6. That's a top 10 matchup. Auburn and Arkansas follows LSU and Mizzou in Como at 9. That's tomorrow triple header action on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. South Carolina and LSU, they're meeting for the 36th time. LSU has the overall advantage, 22 wins to 13 for South Carolina. Gamecocks, Khadijah ahead by two. A lot of feistiness in the early minutes from LSU. Um, I like the aggressiveness LSU's came out with on both ends of the uh, ball. Defensively, they're, they're challenging South Carolina to make shots and find different options, not going inside to Aaliyah Boston. They're doing a good, good job with staying in the passing lanes and keeping people in front of them. Um, and converting with their steals on the offensive end. Um, they're doing a really good job at keeping, you know, South Carolina honest on defense. Um, and I think if you continue to play like that, you might have a shot at taking down the number one team 
in the country. I mean, rarely in the first few minutes of the game does South Carolina turn the ball over three times. That is exactly what the Gamecocks have done. Jalen Cherry took a great charge just a few moments ago before our timeout. It's a South Carolina team that's so balanced, great freshmen, heady seniors in that starting lineup. What do you make of the mix of talent, just scoring and production everywhere up and down this lineup? Um, when you have a, a, a point guard, a senior point guard in Tyasia Harris and a, a senior post in uh, Kiki Harper Harrigan, um, leading these freshmen uh, it comes easy, um, being that they were freshmen coming in and winning a national championship. I'm sure the freshmen look at that and just try to, you know, mimic them in practice, work hard, lock in every practice, and, and just work as hard as they possibly can. And like I said, it's nothing better than being led by a point guard and a post player that are seniors. Trazi can typically hit that off the mark this time. You saw Nikki Fargus a few moments ago, the ninth-year head coach at LSU. She's got this team off to an 18-6 start in great position to finish top four in the league. One more coming for Zaya Cook. Just a great take. Um, Zaya is going to be aggressive offensively going to the basket, and um, that call could have went either way there with Kayla Pointer. Um, so. This is one of the freshmen we were alluding to from Toledo, Ohio. LSU now has to handle South Carolina's um, run. It's a game of runs, and right now South Carolina is, can't come out of a timeout, score, get three points, and now you're going to see two teams that ramp it up in just a bit. Now, Fuwa was posting. That shot got blocked. Kiki Herbert Harrigan with a long reach. Um, South Carolina is one of the best shot blocking teams in the country, and LSU has to know that and understand that and make adjustments to that. Off the cook miss, LSU coming the other way. I'll do you one better. They are the best shot block team <laughs> in the country. An eight and a half a night oh, that's is an, unheard of. That's that's unheard of, and it's very impressive. Um, being that a lot of them not, you know, don't even get in foul trouble with those block shots. Consecutive steals for South Carolina. And this is when the run can start to favor the Gamecocks. Herbert Harrigan. Kiki Herbert Harrigan is probably shooting roughly 90% off from the baselines. They, she loved the baselines, um, baseline jump shot, and she ha pretty much has it down to the teeth. There's the block numbers we were talking about. Beal up ahead, Cook. Two free throws coming. And that's not a great sign for LSU, having your point guard that's been playing almost 40 minutes of contest. Um, that's her second personal foul. Kayla Pointer's second personal foul of the night in the first quarter um, with three minutes to go. Um, that, that's tough there for LSU, but let's see how um, Kayla Pointer handles her foul in the first half. Well, the transition run out puts the pressure on Porter there. You don't want to give up too clean of a look early in a game. The second foul is critical at this point. Cook, 72% from the line. Threading the needle on that pass. You know, the Gamecocks has been gelling really well. They play well together. You see the chemistry that they have on and off the court um, when they play together, how happy they are for each other. Um, and just want to win. It's a 9 nothing South Carolina run. Maybe another turnover. Harris! That was a great steal and, and play there by your point guard, Tyasia Harris, to convert. Um, and make that a great play there. I believe that's her, almost her third steal of the basketball game. Her second steal of the basketball game. Excuse me. We go here with a timeout from LSU. 
head coach Nikki. It just went from an eight to six ball game to now a 17 to six game, 11 nothing run for South Carolina. South Carolina's been uh, been one of those teams that can turn it on and off very fast, can score really fast with the front court speed that they, I mean, the back court speed that they have. Um, they're liable to score six to nine points within 30 seconds. So they've been doing that a lot this season. So as you see them come out of timeouts, watch the difference of South Carolina's um, game plan. And if you're Mitchell, you're watching this run, and it it must be difficult to look on from the bench, and that's where she is going to have to watch the remainder of this season. Out for the year after suffering a knee injury, Khadija, back on February 2nd. That's gigantic. Uh, she's been, she was playing extremely well. LSU was gelling. They found their identity um, with her pointer in Iowa. Um, just sad to see her go down. Such a strong, uh, such a great player in late the, in the season like this. I bet Nikki Fargus is not going to want to have to do this. I don't know if we'll see Pointer until the second quarter at this point. Correct. And so now you're going to see what, where are you going to get your offensive uh, points from. Um, that's 18 points. Your floor general and your floor leader um, goes down with two fouls early in the first quarter. Foul on Harris. There's the junior from Marietta, Georgia, is on the bench with two fouls. It's been four minutes since LSU has scored. LSU hasn't been playing that well um, on the road this season. Um, they're trying to find a new uh, way of doing things on the road so they can get the, you know, road wins. Um, they got a 10-game winning streak going on right now um, at home, so they're trying to figure out how to win on the road. Offensive foul. Lily Grisset whistled for her first. The junior just came off the bench. LSU is doing just a great job at positioning their body, giving themselves a chance to get that charge call taken. And I want to say Cherry has already taken two charges today. Um, she's doing a really good job of getting her body in front of the South Carolina's offense. She's got the last two baskets for LSU. The other was about five minutes ago, so that stems the drought. She's going to have to do a lot more of that, especially being with uh, point, uh, Caleb on the bench. She needs to hit a lot more of those shots. It's great seeing her hit those early on. Cherry, the junior classmate, a pointer. Her she jumps the passing lane. Her second steal of the game, layup in the open court. She's playing well right now for LSU. And like I said, she has to play this way. Um, the point guard's on the bench, and she has to get it going for LSU offense. Terrific instincts from Cherry. It was her charge a few minutes ago that stopped the South Carolina momentum, at least for now. Harris wants it. Good roll, that's three. Great patience there by South Carolina to find the best shot on the floor. Um, Tyasia steps up and knocks it down. South Carolina, 37% from three. One of the top 20 percentages in the country. Afuwa with her first basket. Afuwa has to get going. She's been playing um, well for LSU. Um, she needs to get a lot more touches and a lot more shots at the basket. Goes for 10 and a half points per game. With Mitchell out, she's the leading rebounder. Right, but a team like South Carolina, you need a lot of rebounds and, and, and boxing out on the defensive end so that you don't give up second chance points to Leah Boston down low. Great cut of the baseline for Grissette. Harris found her. One second. I mean, when you got a pop, uh, the top point, one of the top point guards in the country, Tyasia Harris, you got to expect good things like that. And South Carolina closes the quarter on a 15 to six run. Six different South Carolina players have scored in quarter number one. Second cue next. The women's team, of course, just taking down LSU yeah, a couple uh, of days ago. 
The women's team has been playing extremely well this season. They're in the they have beaten five top 25 teams this season, including number 15 Michigan State, number 10 Texas A&M, number 11 Kentucky, number 15 Texas A&M. Once the Reagans have changed, and a number 25 Tennessee on February 13th. So this team has competed and played very well against top 25 teams so I don't want people to think LSU is not a really good team this is a really good team that's that lost one of their really good players Ayana um, so you have to change your identity late in the season and that sucks um, but um, coach Nikki and the staff is really bought into what's going on and, and, and getting their girl, girls pumped up for the next contest they're a really really te really good team as you said South Carolina is just a really really good team right I mean number one in the, number, and one. number one in the country I mean it's pretty tough. There are the wins you referenced. Yeah. And a difficult schedule for Nikki Fargus, who has this team positioned really nicely for the NCAA tournament. Right now projected as a seven seed in the field. Correct. But we'll see what happens the remainder of the way without Mitchell to double dribble on Victoria Saxton. Still no Kayla Pointer on the floor for LSU on the bench with two fouls. Um, it's early in the game. You, I'd be um, very shocked if um, Coach even put her in in the first five minutes of this quarter here. I um, just want to protect your um, your leader, your floor general, and your, your leader scorer right now. You want to protect her and see um, what, the res what the other players can do uh, until she gets back on the floor. Oh, especially if Cherry can hit some shots like she has done. Yeah, she's been hitting a lot of shots, taking a lot of shots. Um, which is good for LSU. They need some offense. They need to figure out which player um, the offense is going to come from. Saxton with a great cut to the rim underneath on the other side has South Carolina back ahead by 11. Long two. And the rebound to Saxton. One thing South Carolina is doing really, a really good job at is limiting, limiting LSU to one shot per time down the floor. They're doing a really good job at boxing out and really pushing the ball, really pushing the tempo, making LSU get up and down um, the basketball court. Zero second chance points for the Tigers. It comes from, you know, South Carolina boxing out and you have you know, guards that can rebound and push the floor and push the tempo. Um, so LSU needs to, if they're going to take shots, they have to try to get in and get offensive rebounds to give themselves second chance opportunities. Richard Harris jarred that loose, stays here. And that's exactly what Dawn Staley wants when it comes to tempo. Correct. She wants to push the pace, push the tempo, and, and make people play uh, along with them versus them playing along with others. Didn't like the look. Well, five-second count. Great defense there by LSU to get the turnover on South Carolina. So seven Gamecocks turnovers in the in just a quarter and two minutes. LSU just have to do a better job of converting off of those turnovers. Try Z shuffled her feet. So you don't want to give it right back to the team that just gave it to you. That's what LSU does there. Right. I just like the simple fact that she didn't settle for her three-point shot and she was looking to be aggressive against this shot-blocking um, team. Um, right there, she just took a little bit too many steps. And South Carolina's got to watch out for that. You got a four, if you will, that can step out and hit that three. Correct. Um, but South Carolina, you know, also has the same thing on the opposite end. So it's going to be a great matchup for them. Here's Boston. Just got whistled for three in the key. So if you're doing Staley right now, you didn't get the ball in on a five second count, a turnover, three in the key. Right, you're not going to be too happy with the turnover column. Um, South Carolina has to do a really good, better job um, taking care of the ball and, and little small minor mistakes like um, what just happened. First foul of the freshman, Boston. Second. She just got second. She just got whistled for her second foul. Yep. Pardon me, half. number two on Boston. Oh, no, they still wish it up for one. She still has one. It was a three-second call last. 
the last call. LSU gets the timeout. Great heads up play there by uh, Coach Nicky. South Carolina with the 11 point advantage. This is now week six in a row that South Carolina has been ranked number one in the country. More on that next. South Carolina leads by 11. South Carolina by 11 inside Colonial Life Arena. That youngster has one more T-shirt than Khadijah Sessions has ever <laughs> caught at a game just this evening. You never caught one. When attending, you never caught the T-shirt. I just, I know, I just have never, I just, I don't know. They just won't throw <laughs> me a T-shirt as bad as I love T-shirts. The odds are always low. I'm with you. I sometimes get jealous when I see others catch it as well. Yeah. So South Carolina, eh, not the best of play, if you will. A little sloppy on the South Carolina end, but right. still up by 11 right now. Correct. I mean, they, they made just enough plays to be up right now, but LSU isn't going away. They're going to make plays. They're going to stay tough, and they're going to make this a competition all the way through the game. Can it turn the eight South Carolina turnovers into more points? Cherry has played a brilliant first quarter in change. She almost had her hand on the offensive rebound. Instead, this is Henderson. Wow, that's her third charge being taken here tonight. Um, she's doing a really good job at stepping in front, stepping in front of South Carolina's ball handlers, and just willing to sacrifice her body um, for her teammates and trying to make plays so their team can come back. So they're trying right now. LSU has to do a, a better job at trying to take care of the ball offensively and put the ball in the basket. They're doing what they need to do defensively so far. They just have to convert on the offensive end. Just seven made field goals. LSU has not attempted a free throw yet. Cherry, bounce pass, the basket down for Trazi. It's a really good shot for her being she's a shooter. Really nice touch on her jump shot. Need a little bit more of those baskets to go through. She's from Toulouse, France. That's southern France. Saxton posting, and she gets whistled for the offensive foul. Hooked her defender. Right. Um, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people at home understands an offensive foul in the book is a turnover. When a team gets an offensive foul, it goes into the turnover category, so that makes it look like a team has a little bit more turnovers, which it is because the ball is going to the other team. So um, that's another turnover that LSU has uh, made tur uh, USC um, do. Was that the right call? Did she hook her defender there? Uh, it's, I mean, it's an it's a, it's a eye test with the, the referee, so I think that from that angle, it definitely was a hook shot. Trazi got Herbert Harrigan in the air. Back-to-back -back baskets for the junior. And she can get going. She can shoot the ball. She's been shooting the ball extremely well um, the last three games. So you see her take a lot more shots here. And I know Coach Nicky and, and the crew over there has to feel good knowing that their team is still in the game with the number one team in the country with your leading scorer on the bench and your point and your floor general. And it's another South Carolina turnover. That's three straight in a row there. And LSU actually is converting on them. So that's a good sign. LSU has actually closed the gap since we've last seen Pointer. Again, she has not played yet in the second quarter with the two fouls. Yeah, and LSU's been holding their ground and playing well. Uh, so you see that Coach Staley is now putting her floor general, Taisha Harris, back in the game um, to maybe try to stop some of this bleeding that LSU is putting on South Carolina right now. The 6-5 of Fua got blocked. Henderson. 
Brooks controls. LSU could get it back to a four or a five-point game, most likely five. This team doesn't take a lot of threes. Right, doesn't take a lot of threes, hasn't been to the foul line yet tonight. Um, so I'm excited to see what they're going to do here in terms of coming back. Beal with the rejection. That's the third South Carolina block. Shot, uh, leading the uh, nation in shot block, South Carolina. So they're coming from all angles. There you have the big guard, um, Bria Beal, with a great defensive block there. And Brooks on the step back that time. Thought she had enough separation. And the try in vain. Brooks throws it to Henderson. She draws the foul on Cherry, her first, and Henderson has two free throws. Great heads up play with Destiny Henderson being there in the play, guarding Cherry um, there, getting a good take. Um, Cherry just a little bit a hard foul there on Destiny Henderson, but you see the uh, sportsmanship there, picking her up and he helping her up. It's good body control from Cherry. She tried to time the swat. Right. Henderson, 65% from the line. Well, South Carolina had turned the ball over on five straight possessions. Now they get back into the scoring column. You know, hopefully seeing, you know, free throws, something go uh, towards the basket um, is a good thing. So maybe that'll help South Carolina get going offensively. The minus four turnover margin tonight. Afua with her second basket. The junior from Georgia has four. Great aggressive uh, take there, being that the defense was still in the play to finish that play. Um, they need a lot more of that. Love to see it. 14 of LSU's 20 points in the paint. Another charge call. I mean, my goodness. LSU is getting in position, positioning their bodies to to stop South Carolina attacking the paint. Um, so you got to take your hats off to LSU, sacrificing their bodies, taking charges. I mean, that's a post player. You've seen the first three charges being taken from a guard, but that right there was from a post player. So um, they're locked in to the game plan, and they're ready for South Carolina and whatever is being thrown at them. Five charges taken in the first 15 minutes. That's impressive. I don't think I've seen that all season. Five in a game best. is impressive. Is impressive, but let alone in the first half. Afua has to get going, and right there she hits two in a row. There she goes with the short jump shot. Um, she made a lot of those in a shoot-around today when I came to LSU shoot-around. Like I said, the post players, the guards, they were getting up a lot, a lot of shots because they knew they were going to get a lot of short shots around the paint on South Carolina, and I believe they're hitting four out of five already. Henderson for three. And that's one player you just do not want to leave open, her or Zaya Cook. They're, they're capable of knocking down um, three-point shots in that zone. Only six triples taken by these two teams. South Carolina has two makes. Afua again. Two free throws coming. First time to LSU to the line. I love the game plan. Continue to feed it to, um, feed it to your big girl. Make her make something happen. She goes two for two, two times down the floor, and there you go. She gets the foul. Now she's heading to the line. So that's a good sign for LSU. Give Staying it. aggressive. Give it to the six foot five center. There are some teams that couldn't score more than single digits and a half against South Carolina. LSU with 23 within seven as we near halftime. I mean, well, that's what you have to do against the number one team in the country. You have to score, be able to score with them, but you also have to be able to contain them. And I think LSU is doing a really good job at just turning them over um, and getting more possessions on the offensive end. And that's the difference of this game um, here tonight. Transition three. Cook left it short. And that's a foul and on takes, Herbert Harrigan. Takes LSU back to the free throw line uh, to shoot two. Um, so you can bring this game within five with three minutes and 29 seconds to go in the second quarter going into halftime. I mean, if you're LSU right now, you're not pleased because you're losing, but you're pleased because you're, you're keeping the game close uh, against the number one team in the country and your starting point guard, your, star, your leading scorer, um, Kayla Pointer is on the bench. Been there since, I believe, the three, four minute mark in the first quarter. Um, so it's pretty impressive what LSU is doing here right now tonight against the number one team in the country. 
It's got to be eating away at Pointer. What's going through her mind as she prepares herself for half number two? Um, to come in and stay um, composed, stay aggressive, uh, make sure she keeps this lead uh, in this game close as possible and keep her uh, teammates engaged. So that's her biggest thing is coming in and putting, trying to score, put points on the board to, to take down the number one team in the country. The number one team in the country has turned it over 13 times. The number one team in the country averages 13 turnovers a game. Um, I mean, I got you got to give credit to the LSU defense. I mean, they're stepping in front of South Carolina, taking charges, sacrificing their body, moving in the zone, putting their hands in the passing lane. So you got to take your hats off to what LSU um, has been doing in the first half against the number one team in the country defensively. You just said it earlier. This is nothing new to LSU. It has knocked off a bunch of ranked teams this year, five of them. Correct. I mean, and they, they went right at Mississippi State. They were down by a lot, came back and made it a one-possession game with the uh, second leading team in the SEC. Um, so, like, this, this team is never out of the game. They work hard, and they're never going to give up. Uh, me here could not get that one to go close range. There was a little contact, no call. Uh, I mean, Don Staley is asking about that. It's the SEC, man. You have to play basketball. Some things aren't going to be called, and that right there, that can go either way, and the fans have to understand that. Um, it's the SEC basketball, one of the toughest conference conferences in basketball, so it's going to be aggressive. Richard Harris was pestered for about 15 seconds there by Herbert Harrigan. Still got the ball back in the look. It's a four-point game with two to go. I'm just excited to see that LSU is, is stepping up to the plate and, and going at South Carolina in their home. And, and they're playing extremely well right now. But one thing I do know about basketball, you have to put two halves together. For right now, that they're playing extremely well. So if they can put this half with the second half, we're going to have a game here tonight in the Colonial Life Arena. After the Harris miss, LSU can get it back to a one or a two-point game. 135 to go in the half. And, you know, I know some people was thinking that Coach Nicky was going to put Kayla Pointer back in the game, um, but her team has been hell served. It's a one minute and 25 seconds, so I believe she'll keep, um, keep her on the bench and take her into the second half and start over. At this point, right, no need to. Yeah, South no Carolina need. has, what, two possessions left? Right. Three at most. 15 and a half points per game is on the bench since – as you mentioned, about the three-minute mark in the first quarter. So no pointer, no Mitchell for LSU. Not too many problems outside of just a four-point deficit, which is exceptional against the number one ranked team in the country. I mean, when you have kids that, you know, have the will to win, wants to win, and are going to do whatever it takes and not scare anybody, um, you're going to get a game like this. And LSU is that type of team that they're not going to run away from anybody no matter what the number is in front of your team name. South Carolina pretty cold from three as well. Two of eight from beyond the arc. Cherry. Rebound to Harris. Gamecocks looking for a couple of buckets before half. Cook on the drive, a Fuwa fouls Cook. She's at the line for two. Great closeout from Cherry to force Cook to drive. A really great closeout, not a smart foul there um, by your big girl late in, a, uh, in that clock like that, being that they held South Carolina to a difficult shot, didn't know where the shot was going to come from, and then you end that with a foul. A um, little frustration, uh, but trying to get it back and convert uh, when you get these this next opportunity on the offense game. What do you suppose the message is from Staley in the locker room at half? Um, value each possession. Take care of the ball. We have 13 turnovers in one half. We normally average that a game, and we have to convert um, offensively, run our plays, uh, make shots. They're not making their three-point shots they normally make. So, I mean, basketball is a game of halves, games of runs. Um, so just come out with a second half with another uh, a gear. South Carolina normally does really well, plays really well in the first and third quarters. Teams have to know that. Teams have to come out at halftime knowing that South Carolina is going to come and they're going to bring it. So I'm interested to see what the third quarter is going to look like. Value the possessions like you value the T-shirt you catch in the T-shirt toss. <laughs> Timeout, South Carolina. Right. So they can stretch it back to it, maybe an eight or a nine point lead before halftime. After the Trozzi missed just a few moments ago, 13.5 to go in half number one. 
South Carolina has it shot the ball poorly, 48% from the right. field. But again, it's the turnovers. 13 of them in the first half. This team averages 13 a game. Right. I mean, you got to give you you got to give credit to the LSU's defense. They stick they sticking with their game plan. Um, they they they're knowing South Carolina plays. They're jumping the plays. Um, they're just playing really well right now defensively, and you have to give them credit uh, more than you can give uh, South Carolina not credit because they're not making shots and doing things. They're being disrupted from what LSU is doing defensively. And right here, I'm sure in the timeout. You talk about taking care of the ball, run the play, execute the play without a turnover here. You just saw Cherry a moment ago. I think she's the first half MVP for LSU. A few steals. She's taken three charges. Aaron passed with five seconds, and it looked like Henderson, though, bounced that one off an LSU player. And so it's South Carolina ball with 3.1 to go. And that was almost a turnover, almost another great defensive possession there by LSU coming out of that timeout. Spencer just checked in for LSU. She's going to guard the ball. Harris to inbound. Cook, one second. Six-point game at the break. The, not, it's the first ranked Gamecocks have won 19 straight. LSU trying to do what only Indiana did this season. That was beat South Carolina. How did we get to this point? Um, South Carolina, great defense. Um, not giving up on plays and, and, and not getting out of the game plan just because Kayla Pointer was out the game. You got to take your hats, hats off to Cherry. She's been playing extremely well. And again, their defense has been holding serve in the first half. Tigers within six, looking for the monumental upset. We've got 20 more minutes, half number two, when we come back. The number one ranked team in the country has a lead, but not a lead it's accustomed to. Just a six-point advantage over LSU. And Dawn Staley was making faces like that at times during half number one. Back inside Colonial Life Arena with Cadiz Assessor, two-time former Gamecocks captain Kevin Fitzgerald with you. All right, what's the adjustment that needs to be made for South Carolina before the start of the second half? Um, just taking care of the basketball, taking care of the basketball and uh, doing a better job on defense, um, getting in front of uh, their players, contesting their shots, boxing out and pushing, pushing the tempo like they were doing in the first quarter to get that um, lead that they have, pushing the ball, playing defense, getting in the passing lanes. They have to do more of that. Number three, typically in the purple. She's wearing the pink today for LSU, back on the floor, sat for the final 13 and a half minutes of that first half with two fouls. And that is Kayla Pointer who leads this team in scoring. Gets the screen. Tries he can hit that three. Shot blocked. It was Herbert Harrigan again. I mean, Kiki Herbert Harrigan stays in that play. Did a really good job at coming back in the play. Harris now with eight points, a chance for one more. It's a good sound for South Carolina coming out of halftime, seeing points go through the uh, basket instead of a turnover. That was the first missed free throw of the evening. The Gamecocks eight of nine from the stripe. 48% shooting from the field for the Gamecocks. The 13 turnovers ended up being the bugaboo at half number one. Open look for Richard Harris. Um, she's been doing a really good job being aggressive offensively, taking more shots. I um, wish she, had, she has to because Ayana um, is out for the season, so she has to do more offensively uh, for the LSU Tigers. And starting forward, Ayana Mitchell suffered a... Brutal knee injury on February 2nd against Texas A&M. Now LSU has won four of five since. But it's trying to bounce back from a brutal loss to Auburn this week. 
Yeah, Auburn um, went right at LSU. Um, their 1-2-2 press was really bothering um, LSU, and, and they couldn't get any shots to fall. And Auburn was making a lot of shots that game. So um, I know Coach Nicky would want that game back probably in LSU since they they got a 10-game home winning streak. Even still 8-4, and four, tied for third in the league. Three to shoot. This point to realize she does. Boston with the board. Just the fourth rebound for the freshman. She averages nine a game. Now Boston, who leads his team in scoring, wound up with just four points in the first half. Didn't shoot poorly. Didn't have many looks, though. Right. Um, she didn't get any touches. Uh, I think all her four points came off of offensive rebounds, but they weren't in the first half. They weren't getting up too many shots. They were actually getting a lot of turnovers in the first half. So hopefully here in the second half you see um, a difference. Pointer draws the foul on Traz, uh, uh, pardon me, on South Carolina, or the foul is on Trazzi. You see the impact of Pointer of late. The foul trouble, a big reason behind just the two points. And it's always tough to, to see players um, come back from two fouls and seeing how their game uh, come back. Some, some players are, are tough to try to get back in the flow of the game. Now you only have one half to try to lead your team to beat the number one team in the country. I'm interested to see what Kayla Pointer has here in the second half. Hesitation. Probably a little too unselfish that time. South Great. Carolina fumbles it out of bounds though. Just go up with it, right? Right there. I mean, if I'm going up against Aaliyah Boston, I may think twice about it as well, <laughs> too. Um, one of the best shot blockers in the country. <laughs> Richard Harris lost it. Pointer got it back. Now the shot clock reset because there was the brief change of possession. Bounce pass down to Afuwa. South Carolina jars it away. LSU withstood the one brief South Carolina run late in the first quarter. There hasn't been one since. It feels like one is brewing right now. Back-to-back -back buckets for Boston and a couple of deep post catches. And this is when South Carolina gets dangerous here in the third quarter. They see a couple of baskets go through the basket, get a couple of stops, and it's hard for teams to stop their run, but LSU has to answer right here offensively. A Fuwa, shot blocked. It was Boston. Cook leaves it for Herbert Harrigan. a great pass there by Zaya Cook. Heads up to know Kiki Herbert Harrigan was there waiting uh, for the play. Pointer can't snap the 6-0 run. And as you see, foul. And it couldn't be on a fool. It must be on Brooks. It is. LSU, um, since Pointer's been in the game, has been doing a lot of standing and watching, um, seeing if she's going to get off and get going. I think they need to do the same thing they did in the first half, just moving the ball around, finding the hot hand, and not just settling for uh, what Pointer's going to bring to the offensive table, but just continuing to just trust everybody on the floor. Um, right now they're just watching her do the show, but um, once that they realize that they're doing that, hopefully they make an adjustment and making adjustments quick. And you just beat me to it. That's about three straight possessions with the shot clock dwindled down to what? Nine, 10, 11 seconds, and then Pointer trying to do it all. Right. And some, like I said, sometimes you want to see what players do after sitting down in the first half. Are they going to come back and try to get up the shots that they didn't get in the first half? Or their flow of the game is different. And right now, the flow of the game is really different for LSU, but hopefully they get back on track. 7 nothing South Carolina run. Richard Harris, long two, left it short, and a run out. Zaya Cook.
And I think South Carolina's on a really good run right now, playing defense, um, bothering LSU. Um, they made their adjustments in halftime, and uh, you can tell the difference of the, the adjustments that South Carolina's made here in the second half. This is a three. Got it. Big three. Well needed three. Um, she need to see something go through the basket. I mean, that's a good sign for LSU. That's the first triple tonight for the Tigers. Just the second take. That's Pointer's first basket since the opening quarter. Another deep catch for Boston. And they whistle a Fuwa for the foul. Basically punched that one out of Boston's hands, but there was a little contact. Second foul on a Fuwa. LSU now hanging on for dear life in the third quarter after a recent 9-0 South Carolina run. South Carolina went on a recent 9-0 run. Its six-point advantage from halftime is doubled. LSU fighting tonight against the top-ranked team of the country with Khadijah Sessions, Kevin Fitzgerald with you, Aaliyah Boston, the freshman from St. Thomas with a couple of blocks today, putting together a fantastic freshman campaign. Now one, one away from tying the freshman record for blocks in a season. Um, that's impressive. Uh, she's about to tie Elena Coates um, with 73 block shots in her freshman season. Um, of course, she's going to break that record here. Um, she's going to break a lot of records um, here in Colonial Life, I believe. Um, she's such a phenomenal player. Um, she doesn't need the ball to be effective. Um, she, she's a very good communicator, very good defender, smart. Um, I'm very excited to see what she's going to do for her four years. So you played with Elena Coates, right. the, the record holder who she's chasing down right now during her freshman season. What are the similarities? Do you see a little of her in Boston? Um, the similarity is protecting the rim. Um, if, you, if your guard get beat, um, be there to protect the rim. Um, I see uh, Elena Coates is a monster with offensive rebounds, and that's what Aaliyah Boston, that's where she gets all her points from, is offensive rebounds. So it's a little similarity, but um, a lot of differences. But those two things, uh, that really sticks out to me about those two. It's only the second free throw uh, missed by South Carolina um, today. 10 of 12 for the strike. They've outscored LSU by eight from the charity stripe. A Fuwa a little strong, kept it alive momentarily. Three on two if they hurry. Herbert Harrigan draws the foul. And Aaliyah Boston comes back down the court, shaking up a little uh, from that play. One thing LSU um, is doing different um, that I see right now is putting South Carolina on the, uh, on the line, on the free throw line, um, fouling, not giving themselves a, a really good chance um, to get stopped. They're just fouling and, and sending South Carolina um, to the line and getting points, um, which isn't a good thing because they're not converting on the offensive end. So hopefully South, um, LSU can get back to um, taking charges and, and disrupting um, South Carolina's offense. The Tigers took those five charges in the first half. Pointer, fed it to Afuwa who drew the foul. First on Cook. It was a six point game at the break. South Carolina has stretched it to a 15 point advantage party. This team has won 19 straight. Chase of the program record which is 22 in a row. Jalen Cherry with her first basket in the second half now with a team high 11. Um, she's, on a, she's on a roll right now. Um, seeing shots go through a basket as, as a, a shooter um, is a good thing. She doesn't take a lot of threes. Um, she's a 15, 17 foot shooter. Um, but seeing that one go in has to feel good for her. LSU is just packing it inside. They did a good job on the first look. A point blank miss from Beal, and so the Tigers dodged a bullet. It has to convert now on this end. But you see uh, what the game plan was. They double boxed out Aaliyah Boston, and they left 
a whole open player on South Carolina um, to uh, get the rebound. Um, unfortunately, Bria Bill missed that, but they are double teaming Aaliyah Boston down there. Third foul on Cook, or make it Beal. And so Beal heads to the bench in place of Destiny Henderson. Nikki Fargus' team has beaten five ranked teams this year. You get plenty of chances in the SEC. LSU with a couple out of conference as well. Afuwa spins. Can't score with the left. Harris always quick to break out. See Ty Harris there directing traffic, making sure her freshmen don't take bad shots and getting it to the right player. Herbert Harrigan now with eight points, six assists for Harris. Averages five and a half a game. That's the best of the AC part of the SEC. Pointer on the drive. Ty Harris does a good job at putting her teammates in position uh, to score. You like the color of the left shoe or the right shoe? I'm neon gonna, green or neon orange? I'm going to go with neon green. It's, a, it's not an orange. It's more of a I want to say pink. light red. I like red. Yeah, I'm going to go with the, the lime green. Salmon? Um, Salmon colored? Yeah, I like the lime green part. I guess I like lime green because of my aunt. That was her favorite color. Rest in peace um, to my aunt. She used to come to all my basketball games. So. Herbert Harrigan's got the neon green light. Ten points. Oh, yeah, when she gets going, she gets going. Second foul on Cook. LSU has to find some, some offense, quick points, quick buckets to try to cut into the South Carolina lead before the fourth quarter comes. Ten points in this quarter, but outscored by eight by the Gamecocks. Six-point lead is ballooned to 14 for the Gamecocks. Three to shoot into Pointer's hands. Shot clock violation is the call. Although it looked like that basketball hit the rim right. before the horn and the play was live when that whistle so they might go back and review that and change the call well we're going to see so at the whistle i don't think anybody had possession so this may be, be ruled a jump a ball, ball and it's going to go carolina's way and that's a tough break for lsu if so looked like it clearly hit the rim before the shot i think clock. i think it hit the rim Take a peek at it. Backboard. Rim. Oh, it grazed. I don't know. I mean, from that angle, I can see why she said it wasn't. Oh, no, somebody did have possession. South Carolina had possession of it. From that angle that you guys just put on there, I believe they're probably going to stay, stay, stick with their call if it's not enough evidence to tell if that ball grazed the rim or not. Let's revisit your point you brought up earlier in the show while we have a moment. South Carolina in the first quarter led by 11. Came right. out of the gates, outscored LSU 23-12. to Then the Tigers outscored South Carolina by five in quarter number two. Here in the third, the Gamecocks have scored 18 to LSU's 10. So far, they've won the third quarter, won the first quarter. As you pointed out, they right. always do that, now lead it by 14. Right. Um, they always – South Carolina is a, a really good team. They're coming out strong. They're going to come out, and they're going to look like that number one team in the country in the first quarter. You know, some teams make their mistakes and make their adjustments in the second quarter, so you have to go on the timeout and make those adjustments if you're South Carolina and come out aggressively. Um, so it looks like they stick with their call, huh? You just saw D. Cantor 
Speaking with Nikki Fargus, did you see her? She threw the thumbs up. So it looks like it will be ruled a jump ball, which actually works out in LSU's favor. I think favor. you call that, though. Well, like you said, South Carolina had possession. Right. So now, if anything, LSU gets the next possession arrow. Correct. It looked like DeCanter signaled for a jump ball. And, yep, the possession arrow flips, so LSU actually comes out on the plus side. <laughs> if you can look at it that way from that sequence. Right. They're down 14, though, so not too big of a plus. Boston double teamed and still scores it. She was so patient, so calm in that double team, and to still finish over the top of a 6-5 post player with another guard on side of you, um, that's pretty impressive. It's 11 points for Boston, 7 this quarter. Afuwa was open, didn't get it, and Pointer got blocked. I'm not sure if that was they're going to give that. They might give that block to Kiki Herbert here again. You got to remember, Aaliyah Boston is one shot block away from tying Elena Coates for the most shot block by a freshman in the season. She's going to shatter the record too. Oh yeah, she's going to she's going to completely shatter the record. Uh, put that number so high um, for the Knicks. Um, post player that comes in to South Carolina. Second foul on Herbert Harrigan. So now Pointer flip-flops to the other side of the basket. Shot clock is off, 17.5 to go in the quarter. Major sequence here for LSU. Can it slice into the deficit before the final quarter? Pointer has hit one three. Instead, she drives. That was a two-hand rejection. I mean, what a way to tie up the block shot with a two-hand monster block by Leah Boston. Absolutely smothered it. That describes what South Carolina did to LSU in this quarter. Outscored the Tigers by 10. The six-point halftime advantage, now 16. 73 for Boston. Congratulations. Pins it, and she pinned it off the backboard. Fourth quarter at Colonial Life Arena, South Carolina led by six at the break, have extended the lead to 16. With Khadijah Sessions, Kevin Fitzgerald with you, Aliyah Boston with 73 blocks that ties the South Carolina freshman record. And did it in style a few minutes ago, too. Right, yeah, that was a style. Two-hand blocked to, to, to tie the freshman record. Very impressive. I mean, go all the way back to her first freshman collegiate game with a triple-double uh, with 10 blocks. Um, that, you know, that's impressive. From seeing that, I knew she was something special on that in that category. Did you ever get two-handed blocked? No, two-hand blocked? I've never got two-hand blocked, but I did get my ball stuffed by Brianna Stewart in the stands. <laughs> on a fast break. If someone was going to do it, I guess not so bad if it's one of the greatest players of all time to do it. Right. Agreed. I'm just looking for silver linings here. Afuwa is heading to the line. Good. Taking advantage of the smaller um, South Carolina guard and doing exactly what she was supposed to. Take her right down to the basket and get a foul call. Afuwa uh, had a strong second quarter. And let's see if she and LSU can slice into the deficit with Boston on the bench, at least momentarily. Um, LSU ha has to pick up the pace um, quick. They only have nine minutes and 34 seconds to try to take down the number one team in the country. And, you have, and it's going to start by getting stops defensively. That zone again for the Tigers. Henderson puts it on the deck, scores it. 
really good take there by Destiny Henderson to get into the meat of LSU defense to go right over the top of the big girl. Try Z fades and hits. Turnover in the backcourt. Jalen Richard Harris. Um, I, had a I had a feeling she was going to get one of them. She's been on Ty Harris all night up there in the front court, and she, she's been consistently um, trying to get that still. So she finally got one to go through. Again, well, you need more plays like that if you're trying to come back against the number one team in the country in their house. And you need to score off of this steal, and Afuwa does. Now with 11. And that's what you have to do. You have to get stops defensively and convert them into points, and they're doing that right now. Boston just got up and is set to check back in for South Carolina. The Gamecocks leading score, shot blocker, who's been terrific. Afuwa whistled for the foul. I think Afuwa is really, um, you know, challenging the, uh, the shot blockers in South Carolina. I think that's her third personal foul um, tonight. I'm um, just challenging, being really aggressive, not backing down um, from South Carolina. She did get ball, but there was body contact. Small body contact. Again, I thought that was a good challenge um, at the rim. Herbert Harrigan now 4-4 from the stripe. If you're LSU, almost feel like we, the clock has struck midnight now. Are you turning back into a pumpkin because Boston just checked back in? Right. Um, being that LSU isn't a three-point shooting team kind of hurts in this in this instance right here where you need three-point baskets to try to cut down this lead pretty quick. Um, so they're trying to hopefully try to get one to go through. Pointer is the shooter. She passes up. Great find, and Jalen Cherry now has 13. Really great inside the um, three-point line shooter. Like I said, the 12, 15, 17-foot range, Cherry has it down pat. She's very efficient inside, um, doing a really good job here tonight with knocking down shots. It's 13 points, a game high. Harris, swish. And that's what you're supposed to do as a, as a senior point guard, go right back at LSU. Four Gamecocks in double figures. It's the ever-balanced scoring attack for the top-ranked team of the country who's trying to notch win number 20 in a row. Right. Boston with the record now. Shot clock did not reset. Pointer has to go. Two on the clock. That yeah. never hit the rim. Shot clock violation. And this time we know for sure. Good, good. That's a good, great defensive stop there by South Carolina. Doing really great defensive possession. Let's see if they can convert into points. I congratulated her once for tying it. Now a congratulations for setting the new record. 74 blocks for the freshman from St. Thomas down in the Virgin Islands. Brittany Griner is not really on record alert. Her freshman record of 223 seems to be <laughs> safely yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if anybody's going to reach what she did. Henderson fouled on the attack. Great, great take there by Destiny Henderson. There's not a lot of guards in the country as fast as Destiny Henderson. One of the fastest guards with the ball in their hands and doing a really good job at just pushing um, through the needle of LSU um, transition defense to get herself to the line for two. Harris to the bench, yeah, Henderson, a great spark off the bench for South Carolina. Ideal sixth player. You saw the numbers at the line. South Carolina leads by 14, has outscored LSU, even despite the two misses, by 10 at the stripe. If you're LSU, you can ill afford to trade baskets from this point on. You may need to mix in a three-point look. You need the stops. Afuwa was fouled.
Overzealous contest that time from Boston. It's a great turnaround uh, jumper down Boston. Really not too many fouls by Boston. She's a really good, smart uh, defensive player. Um, so to see her do that is, is pretty shocking. Um, but that's a great move um, there. I think the fans are going to get something if she misses. I think they wanted a Chick-fil-A sandwich, but it's not going to happen. They get nothing. <laughs> and they'll have to like it. Uh, they still have six minutes to see if they – six minutes to see what's going to happen. The call is LSU basketball. No, pardon, it's South Carolina ball. Nikki Fargus imploring this crew to take a look, although we're not yet under the two-minute mark. Pointer almost got the steal anyway. Tiger zone D needs to stop. Offensive foul. Great position in there by Iowa. Just taking the charge, knowing that the clock, shot clock was running down and Lisa Grissett had nothing else to do but go up with it. And she positioned herself. I'm shocked they didn't check oh. her. She was inside of the paint, so I'm, I'm shocked they didn't check that one. But by a good margin, too. A good margin. Two feet in the paint there. So the sixth LSU charge... Maybe put an asterisk beside it. Loose ball foul against LSU. And it's going to be the third foul on Awa Trazi. So things balance out. Right. Depending on your perspective, though. <laughs> so a 13-point lead for South Carolina. You went to a Final Four. You led South Carolina to one a number of years ago. Right. Do you see a similar Final Four DNA with this team? Um, I do. Um, it's about having chemistry, uh, about having a really good bench. And South Carolina has all those things. It has all those components to win a national championship. It's just about can you do it in this point of the season? Can you continue to play this well in the postseason? Um, I think South Carolina has all the tools to win a national championship, so I'm excited to see what they're going to do. 449 away from its 20th consecutive win. Welcome back to South Carolina Colonial Life Arena. We're going to show Aaliyah Boston here um, being her shot blocks being that she here is now leading South Carolina as a freshman in the shot, clock, shot blocking category with 74 with four here tonight. Right there you see her with a two-hand shot block um, to tie it up with Elena Coates. Um, just an extremely talented freshman in Aaliyah Boston. Right now she's leading the Gamecocks as a freshman with shot blocks. Is it too controversial to say, I think fans should get Chick-fil-A when someone <laughs> two-handed stuffs his shot. Forget about missed free throws. I think people underestimate how hard it is to two-hand shot block someone in the game. At this point, I'm just pandering to the fans. I'm just trying to get them Chick-fil-A. 63% from the field this season, the nine rebounds. Top three in the league in all three of those statistical categories. So Kiki Herbert Harrigan averages 1.7 blocks a game. Most teams in the country, that would lead the team. Right. Uh, this team she's essentially forgotten about because of Boston. Great drive from Henderson. Uh, Kiki Herbert Harrigan is an extremely, extremely good defender. Um, shot block. She compliments Aaliyah Boston well. But you have to realize Kiki Herbert Harrigan has played with the probably the three best post players in South Carolina history with uh, Asia Wilson, Elena Coates, and now Aaliyah Boston. Um, so she, she's been playing alongside of them. So she's been probably learning from them timing up shot blocks. How often would you set her up for that baseline jumper? If, if I was playing with Kiki, every time, <laughs> every single time. 
You saw the miss three on the other end. It's deep looks for LSU, perhaps the remainder of the way. Four minutes, five sets to go, down 13. Nikki Fargus you know, may not want to hear it, but give LSU some credit for keeping this close in this quarter. There were times South Carolina could have went on a run and put this thing away a long time ago. LSU has fought every moment. Great block from Afuwa. Afuwa says she wants to get in on a shot block in action. Four for Boston, three for Afuwa. Points are searching for somebody. Cherry trying to get open. Great defense there by Aaliyah Boston. And just disrupting and changing her shot. A wild shot in South Carolina basketball. Oh, it looks like in three minutes and 13 seconds, South Carolina is going to be two away from tying the school record mark of 22 straight wins. At Kentucky, at Florida. If you're back in this place on March 1st against <laughs> Texas A&M, that might be the record breaker. Um, it, it probably will. Uh, record be, uh, setter. Uh, right, record setter on senior night against uh, a tough, Texas A&M basketball team. It's a really good Texas uh, really, A&M team. Really good Texas A&M team, especially behind Kennedy Carter. Um, they got her back. Um, she's playing extremely well. I, I don't know if she was really hurt coming back from an injury, dropping 37 points. That's pretty <laughs> doggone impressive. Yeah, how serious was the injury? <laughs> so South Carolina is number one in the country. The RPI, though, has spit out a different team atop that ranking and it's Oregon right what's the team that could give South Carolina some problems the rest of the way whether it's in the SEC tournament or the NCAA tournament um right well um as I look at the SEC being that I played in the SEC I know what it takes to just win it on it on the road let alone just play a simple SEC basketball game so one you got to get through the conference um you gotta you, you may have to see Mississippi State again but I I, I think the only team in the country other than, you know, maybe Baylor is Oregon. Oregon's size, Oregon's chemistry, Oregon's uh, team. They have a really good basketball team. So I only see um, Baylor or Oregon um, bothering um, South Carolina. I think it's going to be really good matchups when one of those teams see each other in the NCAA tournament. Aaliyah Boston has 74 blocks this year. Sabrina Unescu actually has 74 triple doubles this season. It's amazing. Right. <laughs> it feels like that. I mean, Aaliyah is one rebound away from a, a double-double here tonight, going along with five shot, shot blocks. Traveling violation, 2.14 to go. South Carolina leads by 16. Leticia Amiher checks back in. And a timeout taken by LSU. South Carolina trying to close it out, but we return. Dawn Staley's team is two minutes, 13 seconds away from its 20th straight win. South Carolina is set to improve to 26 and one, 13 and 0 in SEC play. Kadesia, South Carolina has three games remaining in the regular season at Kentucky, at Florida, and then home against Texas A&M. Kentucky's doubling up Ole Miss tonight at the half. And you've got Florida down by two at the half to Alabama. Yeah, and then you got Tennessee in the race there with Arkansas. And you know that, I, you know, it's, I think it's a three-way, four-way tie um, in the SEC for third place right now. And LSU is one of those teams. Um, battling for that spot. Um. And LSU. Coming up next for the Tigers. Gets Georgia, then Vandy at Arkansas to close out the year. That's going to be a, a real tough one. Arkansas plays well at home, and they've been playing well all season behind Tofu and Dungy. 
Dawn Staley bails out Zaya Cook, who is trapped. A timeout taken with 2.04 to go. And the only team to do it this year was Indiana back on November 28th. And that is beat South Carolina, who, of course, has won 19 straight since. What's the team then? Perhaps it's Texas A&M on March 1st, but then even again to the SEC tournament that South Carolina might get some problems from. Um, I, I would like to see that rematch with uh, Mississippi State in the uh, SEC tournament in Greenville um, coming up here soon. It's going to be a really good match between them and, and, and Mississippi State. Uh, Mississippi State has a little bit of confidence against South Carolina. Henderson spun out in front of her bench. It's going to stay with the Gamecocks. Yep, and, and on January 20th, that was a two-point win right. for South Carolina against, at the time, ninth-ranked Mississippi State. 81-79 was the final. Brooks. Dee Cantor says she pulled the foot before the shot traveled. If Dee Cantor called that, I'm going with it. She's one of the best, <laughs> <laughs> she's one of the best referees um, in the country. That is a ironclad call. Yeah. <laughs> What stood out from LSU's play tonight? Um, LSU, you know, you got to take away that, you know, you stay with the number one team in the country for uh, the whole half. Came out out of halftime pretty stagnant in your offense. Didn't play as well defensively. Um, you just got to take things away from each game. You got to learn and grow. Go back and watch film and see what you did wrong and see how you can come and compete ag against the number one team in the country um, the next time. Maybe you see them in Greenfield, um, first round, second round. Um, you never know. It may shake out that way. You referenced this three-team race or four-team race yeah. right now. Four-team tie, I should say, four for third tie. place. You've got South Carolina. I think you got South Carolina. I want to say Tennessee. No, Tennessee's at the bottom of that one. But LSU, one of those four teams tied for third. Right. South Carolina, of course, Appears to be in position for that number one seed. If LSU finishes among the top four, would they see this team perhaps in the semis of the SEC tournament? So many scenarios to play out. So the three-point basket goes for LSU. Nikki Fargus calls the timeout. It's a 15-point game with one minute remaining. Four different players for South Carolina tonight in double figures. Um, South Carolina, that's what South Carolina. That's the standard. Right. And, you know, last game I seen the media talking about how South Carolina has a, a really a mob bench. Um, South Carolina has, you know, four people coming off the bench that could very well be starting um, at other places. Um, South Carolina has a whole unit right now. They have a, a tough nine people um, that you have to beat. So. It's, it's a tough team to beat. They got scores all around. You don't just have one score. You normally have five, four to five people in double figures every single game. So you really don't know how to um, scout them. This is a really hard team to play. Cook, Boston, Herbert, Harrigan, and then Harris tonight. Each in double figures. The score off the bench today was Destiny Henderson. Went for seven. A couple of rebounds. And you got showed off her speed, right? But you got eight people in the scoring category, so that's a lot of people putting the ball in the basket. LSU must be perfect these next 60 seconds, or South Carolina is going to win its 20th straight game.
They get the result they wanted, at least on this possession. Now that was a bullet from Saxton back to Henderson. It's Don another. Staley's not going to like this number. 17 turnovers for South Carolina. What a 15-point lead. Right. Oh, LSU just has to put a shot up quickly. And in that, and in that tie that we were speaking about is um, LSU, Arkansas, and Kentucky, um, all eight and four, uh, fourth place right now in in the SEC standings, and you got Tennessee um, following behind that. So um, it's a neck and neck race to try to see who's going to fill in the fourth and fifth spot in the SEC to get ready for the tournament in Greenville. This is a three. A third look, another block. Block number 11 for South Carolina. This time, Victoria Saxton joins the block party. Yep. It's a season-long block party. The party is, has not ended. The party tonight, LSU is going to show itself out. South Carolina on its way to its 20th consecutive win. That's two off the program record. 26-1 for number one. Balanced scoring, smothering defense, the block shots. Leading the way, Aaliyah Boston, the new freshman block record holder. Um, that's in impressive to see her come in and, and do do what she's doing for Don Staley and the Gamecocks, led by um, your senior point guard, Taisha Harris. Um, just excited to see what they're going to do in the Greenville uh, tournament. Um, best of luck to LSU and, and South Carolina um, in the next three games um, to try to clinch these spots for the tournament. Hey, thanks for letting me hang out with you tonight. Hey, thank you, man. I needed it. <laughs> South Carolina, a 15-point victory over LSU. Three games remain in the regular season for the Gamecocks. Next up at Kentucky. That's at 2 o'clock on Sunday on either ESPN2 or the SEC Network. So for Khadijah Sessions, I'm Kevin Fitzgerald saying so long from Columbia. Number one in the country. Just won its 20th straight.